Welcome to the uh, first video in the Digital Logic series of videos. In this video, what we're going to talk about is intro in introducing the whole concept of Digital Logic. But specifically, what we're going to spend some time talking about here has to do with uh, um, what is what we're calling digital first, um, as opposed to uh, what you may hear referred to as analog. Um, one thing is um, important to remember is that regardless of what is going on, the way we experience the world and the way the world inter in interfaces with us affects us, it's all analog. Digital is created so we have an easier time of being able to save the information we are observing or be able to process, change, make decisions based on it. Digital eventually leading into the computer systems allows us to take those data in and be able to process and manipulate them a lot faster, more flexible, cheaper. And so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a real uh, um, everyday life the thing that we experience and break it down to its component in terms of analog and digital. So if you, for example, take music, music uh, would be an example of a real world signal, um, so real uh, world um, signal that affects us. Now, how is music created? Well, music is typically created by a human or a musical instrument um, changing the pressure in the air, which in turn will hit an, an, an analog device, something that um, an, an analog device, such as a microphone in this case. And that microphone will take that air pressure and change it, change it to a uh, voltage changing over time. So, for example, some may look like this over time, let's say. Okay, so this would be the way if you put the axes on it, we would have the um, horizontal axis would be time, the vertical axis would be voltage. So that's what comes out of uh, music. As you see, all of this is called analog. Analog based simply means that it's a continuous signal and it changes and it can take on any values between the, the two points. So there's no discontinuity when you look at it from here to here. Everything has a value as it goes through. Now, so 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 this is great. And in the times gone by, we usually we would um, put that into a speaker, and the speaker responds to the voltage, and the sound will come out, and we have we hear music. Now, for the past 50 years or so, we've learned that we can actually convert this, we can, we can run to something we're gonna call it A to D converter, we're gonna take the analog and convert it to a digital, uh, which basically means we're gonna take this value and instead of continuously showing it, we're gonna take it and every so often we're gonna sample it. So instead of having a signal as you are shown over there, we're gonna have a signal here Still here, a vertical axis would be a voltage. Horizontal axis instead of time is what they call samples. So what we're gonna see, we're gonna see every so often there is a sample kind of mimicking what that sig original signal looks like. But this time you only have values at zero, one, two, three, four. And, and each one of these would be a number that we could represent uh, as a number in a variable in a computer. So so that's that's that process is called A to D convert. Now we are at this point we are able to save the data. We can process the data, do all of those things to it. And uh, the beauty of this is that all I have to do is I just have, if you think about memories, uh, computer systems, and all that, all you have to remember is the number, what is the value at one, what's the value at two, three, four, five, and six, and I apply the signal. Now, 
when we are finished, when we want to replay this for someone, that would be, for example, your iPod or whatever system you're uh, using to save your uh, music is going to be sitting right here. That's that's where it's sitting. And when you want to play it back, you run it through something called a digital to analog converter. And all it is, it basically takes the original this signal that you have in here and tries to recreate your original signal back here. So that's the job of this one. So well, of course, as you can see, it might not create it perfectly because all it, all the information it has is what's value. So to it, best, best, best of its ability, it tries to create the original signal, okay? And then when it sends that signal through a speaker, then you have have your real uh, you have a you got sound pressure as the voltage goes through the winding of the speaker it moves the woofer back and forth and create a air pressure which then you will be able to hear music so this is this is a very good representation of a system that um, can interact with the real world in terms of um, real signals going through an analog microphone and uh, coming out with a voltage and then saving that and then recreating it back out um, as we listen to it. Now for the purposes of this class what our goal is that we are working on digital logic which means our focus is really on this middle piece we want to know how could we build devices that can save the data, manipulate the data, and put it back there, which I can guess that is basically what a computer is. Okay, so before we go off of this, um, uh, we have to do some definitions. Um, computers or digital world basically works off of integer numbers, and we typically represent integer numbers in terms of zeros and ones. Okay. So we have to have a definition of what zero and one is. Sometimes you may hear this is called low, this is called high. Sometimes you may have it this called false, this is called true, or many other names. But those are some of the common names you'll, you'll come across. Now, how if, if someone uh, gives me a signal, and let's not even worry about multiple bits, but we have a single um, signal, and we want to represent it in terms of zero or one and let's say our signal kind of looks like this okay many system many digital systems uh, although that's not necessarily required they'll assume that anything that is five volts is one and zero volt is um, false so we all agree on that that's easy to remember so down here is zero here is one but then the question is what about here okay the first impression would be fine if you want to do that why don't we divide why don't we divide one volt and zero volt and we'll say uh, five volts i'm sorry it should be five five volt which is a one and zero volt which is a zero and we're going to call the middle of this thing um, separation so anything above that anything below that the problem we run into it if we do it this way the signals could be noisy and we might have you know going up and down so long ago folks decided that the way we're going to define this thing is we're going to have um, create a margin and if you want to think about it this the, the margin they would say okay this margin is a no no uh, no man zone if you want to no no zero or no one zone anything above this value we're going to call a one anything below this value we're going to call a zero <coughs> but we are not going to make a decision if it's in this region so this region we're not going to make a decision for example on the devices that we're going to play with um, typically this is set around 3.7 volts or thereabout this is set around 0.7 volts or thereabouts. So anything below 0.7 is a um, zero. Anything above 3.7 is a one. Now your question is then how are we gonna treat this? How are we gonna do 
if if this is if this is the um, analog, this is the digital representation down here. How are we going to take that signal and draw it down here? So the way we work with it, we say, okay, there is this. This is an interesting point where there's a transition happening. Another one interesting point is right here where we're going over the limit. Another one is over here. Another one is right here, and on and on, okay? So now the question is how we're gonna deal with. Well, let me go ahead and get a different color. So we're gonna say this is definitely below 0.7, right? So that's definitely gonna be a zero, because here we have zero and one. That's the only option, we have nothing in the middle. Here, because we are above 0.7, but since we are not above 3.7, we can't call it a one yet, so we're gonna hold the zero. Notice what happens. So when you go in, the, in this undefined region, this is the undefined region, they will not, we will not change the value from zero to one. But once you go above 3.7, we're gonna pop up here and change it, okay? Once you get over here, notice that at this point, we're not gonna change because you gotta get below 0.7 because we, before we know that is indeed uh, changing so we're going to drop to zero and at this point since this signal never made it above 3.7 it's going to stay at zero so that's how they got around this problem of noise in the undefined region if it's wobbling back and forth you're not going to get a lot of zeros on one so this analog signal this analog signal got translated to did this digital system now in here i used one digit, one binary digit, which we call bet. So one binary digit is called the bet. And I use one bet to represent this. I could have as easily used more bets if, if I wanted more accuracy, uh, because right now I can only tell between zero and five volts. Okay. So that kind of gives us a little bit of a sense of how um, digital world fits into the real world, which is almost all, um, uh, not almost all analog that brings us to the end of this particular introduction of digital and analog um, systems